Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name's Jasper and around a year ago I reviewed the i20 from Hyundai and I told you it was pretty much the best super mini you could buy. I'm here in 2024 with a facelifted model and I'm going to find out if that is still the case. It usually involves some changes to the face of something and Hyundai have made some subtle changes to the front of the i20 that have sharpened it up slightly and brought it more in line with some of their other models. So this grille section here has been revised, it looks a little bit more like the Tucson. The badge has moved from the grille up to the lower section of the bonnet and that is a massive satin finish H badge. There's been some revisions to these black grille sections around here, and we've still got a lovely low front splitter. The headlamp clusters are broadly similar, and you've still got some brilliant crease work on the bonnet itself. So the front of the car still looks quite purposeful, sharp, and a tiny bit sporty. As we begin to move around the side of the car, you'll notice that you've still got the very prominent crease lines that existed on the pre-facelift model. That's excellent. I do like how Hyundai have retained most of the styling on this car because it was really one of the brilliant points about the pre-facelift. You do, however, have some new pentagram alloys. These are a 17-inch diamond cut design and I think they look pretty good. Moving further, you'll see that in this case, we do not have a contrast black roof, but we've got this fantastic metallic green paintwork all over this car. Really pops in the sunlight and it's a very bright color. But because this is a high spec car, you've got keyless entry. And as we move further back, you've got privacy glass in your rear windows and this lovely chrome belt line that runs along the bottom of the glass house. Moving around to the back, you'll see we've still got the fantastic Z-shaped light clusters with I-20 embossed into them. Really nice striking back end, dark tail glass with rear wiper, large H badge, your I-20 and Hyundai badging, and there's a small element of diffuser type styling at the bottom edge here, but the back end hasn't really changed that much, and I do really like that about this car. They've kept the bits that really worked and just minorly updated some of the areas that could use some refreshing. This is the ultimate specification, which means that you don't have the sportier elements that you would get if you had the i20 N line, which comes with some sportier elements to the body kit and is actually the only way you can get that N type styling now the i20 N has sadly been discontinued. If we pop open this boot, you'll be greeted with 352 litres of space, which is on par with the VW Polo and basically class leading. However, if you fold those rear seats down, you actually get 1,165 litres of space, which does just pip the Polo. Now in here, we've got some space underneath the boot floor, quite a lot of space actually, and we've still got the same fantastic trick parcel shelf that folds down behind the rear seats, some excellent cubby space and your Bose subwoofer and a little curry hook over here. Really practical boot shape, good false floor with some tie down points in it. So yeah, really practical and the packaging of this car is still great. Thankfully, because of the really long wheelbase that this car has, the rear seats have got loads of room for occupiers. And with these headrests and this space available in terms of knee and headroom, it's pretty easy to sit back here quite comfortably. The rear seats fold in a 60-40 configuration, so that's quite nice and practical. And you've got somewhere to tuck your seatbelt buckles out of the way when you do that, so your seatbelts don't get trapped. This car has the lime green contrast stitching, which works their way around the bottom of this bench seat, and that does add a little bit of flair to this cabin. Now, material quality is the same as it was on the pre-facelift version, and that's to say relatively well appointed, but you've got plastics basically all over this door card. In terms of actual features back here, there's a little pocket on the back of the passenger seat. You've got large door bins, which are good enough to hold a reusable bottle of water, and you've got isofix points on both of these outer seats. Down here, you've also got a USB Type-C charge port and a little cubby hole. 
There's not a great deal else to speak about, but in terms of comfort for journeys, this is absolutely good enough for a Super Mini. Up here in the front, it's very much the same as it was pre-facelift, which is to say, pretty good. Same quality of materials, I do like the sculpting of the dashboard, the very upright nature of it, and these strikes that run across it. However, we do have some bright lime green accenting, both in the door cards, on the toggle switches, and of course that contrast stitching on the seats, as well as some quite sporty striping that runs down them. Now, in terms of practicality, I've got my same water bottle, which fits in both of these cup holders in the centre console and in these pretty decently sized door bins that have got some space for like an ice scraper or something down behind the water bottle as well. Glove box is a really excellent size and shape, a nice deep space that is very good at holding the incredibly chunky owner's manual you get with this car. And under here, I've got an armrest, which is a decent depth and is felt lined at the bottom. I've also got a decent cubby down here below the USB Type-C 12 volt and USB Type-A charging ports. That has a Qi wireless charger in it because this is a higher spec car than the standard entry level model. Other things I've got, because this is the ultimate, I've got a pair of large infotainment screens. The driver's cluster is 10.25 inches and this infotainment screen here is about 12 inches in size. On the base spec car, this would be an eight inch screen, but to be honest, all of these systems are really crisp, really clear, and very easy to use. Built-in satellite navigation. I've got manual climate controls down here, which we really like to see still. Air conditioning, a single climate zone, but it is climate control as opposed to just heat and cold. Now down here, I've got a 1200 pound optional extra, which is the fact that this car is a dual clutch gearbox instead of the standard intelligent six speed manual transmission. This is a seven speed DCT, and we'll see how that is to use when we drive the car. A day like today is one where you really appreciate the little things that a car like this has that just make your life a tad easier. I've got auto lights with a full beam assist, I've got automatic wipers with adjustable sensitivity, and those little things coupled with a heated steering wheel and heated seats mean that I am pretty comfortable in here, even though the weather is turning to be pretty poor. All of the controls that I'm interacting with feel really good. I like the indicator stalks, the steering wheel's got some nice polyurethane leather wrapped around it, and all of the touch points in the cabin generally feel pretty good. So that is all still the same case as it was with the pre-facelift i20. They've kept all of the things that make this car pretty nice to be in. I'm also pleased to be able to report that the drive is still just as good as it was in the pre-facelift model, and that is to say it's excellent. The chassis in this is brilliant, the suspension is really well gauged, and it just means that the car is comfortable while still also handling really well. The fact you've got a long wheelbase for this size of car also means that it's set up really nicely, so you've got a lot of space in this cabin. It feels really roomy in here, which is much appreciated. One thing that Hyundai have changed as they facelifted this car is they've removed the mild hybrid powertrain options. So you've still got the same one litre three cylinder TGDI engine in here, which produces either 100 or 120 PS, depending on the power output you go for, but you no longer have available the 48 volt mild hybrid system, which I drove in the pre-facelift car. And I really enjoyed that because the electric motor gave you just a little bit more oomph as you set off. Now, this three-cylinder, one-litre turbo unit still has a reasonable amount of power behind it with 100 PS and 170-ish newton meters of torque, both of which are actually pretty good numbers for a car in this class, and it certainly doesn't feel slow, even though the 0-60 to time is around 11.4 seconds. So overall, yep, the drivetrain and powertrain could give you a little bit more, but it's certainly adequate for this car. I am sadly missing the mild hybrid option, but you can still have some fun in this car because of how good the chassis is and because the powertrain available is still pretty decent. 
I've got a full suite of advanced driver assistance systems. So I've got speed limit recognition, I've got blind spot monitoring, I've got lane keep assist, steering assist for roads where the car recognizes the lane markings, and I've got rear collision alert, front collision and pedestrian detection alert. So I feel safe in here. The car is fantastically easy to place. With it being pretty small but quite boxy, you do tend to know where the extremities are and the light but nimble and fast steering certainly means that your control inputs are really easily acted upon. The steering does lack a smidge of feeling in corners, but realistically in this segment and for this car, it's more than adequate. The seven speed dual clutch gearbox is also very good. It shifts away seamlessly in the background, making progress very easy. But one thing I do know about Hyundai is they make some excellent manual gearboxes. So unless you have to have an auto, I'd save yourself 1200 quid and stick with the six speed manual because that extra little bit of engagement would make this car just a smidge more fun to drive as well. With the dual clutch though, you can knock it over and then shift through the gears manually, but you don't have paddles behind the wheel to do so, unfortunately. The engine sounds a little bit throaty as well, so when you press on, you can hear a grumble coming through to the cabin, but if you're driving in normal circumstances, it's pretty quiet and sits away sipping petrol in the background. When I say sipping petrol, this without having the mild hybrid powertrain is unfortunately not quite as efficient as it would be if it did have that. I do also find it quite interesting that Hyundai have removed that mild hybrid option given now, even in this segment, it's pretty standard for all vehicles to be at least available with a hybrid powertrain. It still doesn't change the fact though that this car is excellent fun simply due to how good this little chassis is and how eager that engine is to work away in the background. The suspension is firm but it's not uncomfortably so and it really does help the car ride brilliantly. If you are a keen driver but need a super mini and want to get something new that comes with a five-year unlimited mileage warranty it's really easy to recommend this car to you and to be honest I genuinely don't think there's anything else in this segment that's as fun to drive as the i20. Yep, facelifted, the i20 continues to be a really good value purchase for you to make, bringing driving enjoyment, practicality and versatility as well as excellent levels of tech for a pretty reasonable price. If you have enjoyed today's video, please do let me know by liking, commenting, and subscribing to the Buckle Up YouTube channel. There's a few different ways you can support us and all of our social medias are linked in the description below. So I will see you next time. Bye.